What do you do when you've already made the world's greatest smartphone camera? Well, you introspect and you atone for the sins that you made with the previous phone. What am I talking about? The Pixel 2 was the world's greatest smartphone camera. But there were so many issues with the hardware on the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL that it was a subpar phone. Fortunately, they fixed most of those issues with the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL. This is the Tech 2 review of the Pixel 3. So I must put a disclosure out there that I am slightly biased when it comes to the Pixels because for the last one year, I've been proudly using the Pixel 2 XL as my daily driver. And if you're a fan of mobile phone photography or if you've been following me on Instagram, my handle there is Gadgetwala, subtle plug, then you would have noticed the outstanding pictures I have clicked near and far from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. Literally so many amazing memories together. So which is why I have been extremely keen on seeing what is it that Pixel 3 is going to bring new to the table. Fortunately, there's quite a few of those things. But first up, that notch. Yes, that ugly, 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 almost fugly notch. It's called the bathtub notch. It's called notch na jane angan teda. It's everything that can be wrong with a notch. But that's all I'm gonna talk about it. It's wrong, I wish it wasn't there. But life isn't perfect. Literally in the first 15-20 uh, minutes of uh, playing with the Pixel 3, you will learn to ignore the notch. There is of course a software way to turn it off completely so that visually there is no indication of it altogether. And frankly, the 6.3 inch display is big enough that uh, if there's a tiny black slab on top of the display, it really doesn't end the world for me. Great improvement when it comes to the display and thank God that Google has switched vendors. They've gone from LG to Samsung now to pick up this incredible looking OLED display. The colors are good. It's still not as bright as we would like it in bright sunlight or daylight, but oh my God, we'll take anything after the disaster that was the Pixel 2 XL's display. Remember the blue tinge problem? Well, there are no issues right here. It's a nice, good saturation, great color reproduction, incredible sharpness display. And then there are these superbly loud and super punchy stereo speakers. Overall, I think this is a great multimedia monster now. Of course, it comes in two sizes. There's the trusty 5.5 inch one and the 6.3 inch one. But if you're a big fan of multimedia, then the Pixel 3 XL is something that you should look at because the large screen really pops out all the content, especially on that HDR 10 capable display. Content looks absolutely stunning. Let's talk cameras. There's no big difference or bump up in terms of megapixels. And the Pixel is literally a big, huge, middle finger to all of the Android phone makers and to Apple because at one end we have Samsung that's trying to do two and three and four rear cameras and of course Huawei is not too far behind in that race and of course you've got Apple that's doing dual lens photography on their brand new 10s and 10s Max by the way you should totally check out the 10s and 10s Max reviews click on the i button to go check out that video review on the Tech2 YouTube channel and then you have a Google who's literally just sitting back <laughs> laughing at everybody and says let me show you how computational photography can literally blow your mind and produce incredible photographic results with just a single lens assembly. On the front though is a whole different ballgame. For the first time, Google Pixel employs two lenses, a super wide angle lens and a regular focal length lens for doing the selfie duties. And boy, am I glad for this implementation because what you now get is fantastic wide angle selfies where you can literally pack in everything. It's great even for taking videos with the front camera, even though I must confess that video is not the strong suit of the Pixel series. It hasn't been on the Pixel 2, neither is it on the Pixel 3. If you're someone who wants to shoot incredible amount of 4K video at 60 FPS or any other resolution or slow motion or hyperlapse or time lapse, 
to shut your eyes and go ahead and buy the Apple iPhones. Even if you buy the brand new iPhone XS or if you buy a three generations old iPhone 7, 7 Plus, video is equal to Apple iPhones. Nobody does it better than them. The combination of the visual core engine, computational photography and machine learning ensures that the lead that Google has with the Pixel when it comes to smartphone photography is maintained. The pictures are absolutely stunning. In low light, in daylight, macro photography, food photography, selfies, all of them look absolutely top notch. Please forgive me for using the word notch yet again. As you can see on the display, the details, the sharpness, oh my god, it leaves nothing to be desired. It is on par with the brand new iPhones and the Galaxy Note 9 when it comes to daylight photography, but it is completely leagues ahead of the competition when it comes to low light or night photography. I'm not the biggest fan of digital zoom, but it does, however, retain decent amount of detail and tries to reduce or keep noise in check when you use the digital zoom feature. There are a couple of really cool software tricks like Top Shot, where it basically automatically shoots a few frames before you hit the shutter release button and a few frames after that. And then obviously gives you the option to choose one frame out of any of those, or you can choose all of them if you so please. The special low light photography mode, the night spot is gonna be uh, coming as a software update in a few weeks. But uh, even the existing low light photography, it is just absolutely remarkable. The portrait mode is my favorite, of course. That is what separates this from everything else. Despite just a single lens assembly, the kind of background separation it gives you, the kind of bokeh that it gives you is absolutely delicious. Of course, the brand new iPhones give you the option, just like the Samsung Galaxy S9 or Note 9, to adjust the amount of background blur that you uh, want. You don't have that option here, but frankly, I would rather sit back and have the Pixel camera do whatever it wants to do with the background on the portrait mode. According to me, this is the best portrait mode on any smartphone ever. Right, we've sung a lot of praises of the brand new Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL, but um, let's get realistic now. Would you drop 71,000 rupees on this kind of hardware if all you want is a great phone? And hey, mind you, this is also the phone that gives you the best and only the best Android P experience. The ninth version of Android is obviously on this and comes in its stock avatar. Great optimization, great animations, great shortcuts. So if you're someone who's looking for only the best stock Android experience with the best smartphone camera for photography in any condition, then shut your eyes and buy the Pixel 3 or the Pixel 3 XL, depending on which screen size you're more comfortable with. But if you're none of those and you don't mind saving some money, then easily and most definitely look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Of course, it's slightly bigger and slightly more unwieldy for smaller hands, but hey, it does everything that the Pixel does, packs in more storage and an incredibly adept and able stylus with the S Pen, and of course has dual lens and is cheaper. Can you believe that? Obviously, if you are the Apple camp, then you have to look at the Apple iPhones, either the brand new, extremely obscenely priced iPhone XS, XS Max, or last generation 8A Plus or 7, 7 Plus. But uh, if you're neither of these specific, I only want the best and the latest hardware kind of a customer, then my God, you're spoiled for options and choices, including Samsung's Galaxy S9 or last generation's S8, including OnePlus 6. Frankly, you can buy two OnePlus 6s for the cost of one Pixel 3 and still save some money. Or the brand new OnePlus 6T that's gonna be launching end of October. My point is this, if you are looking for amazing Android options, there are so many in the market. And what really baffles me is the pricing that Google has gone with on the brand new Pixels. Google knows it is no Samsung, neither is it an Apple. So instead of democratizing their AI, Google Assistant and computational photography on as many Android phones as it can, Instead of doing that, instead of making a nice, massy product that takes kick-ass pictures and democratizes Google Assistant for everybody, it chooses to be a snob and price this extremely, extremely high. 
For that reason and that reason alone, we cannot wholeheartedly recommend this to a normal smartphone buyer in the Indian market. If you don't mind the high price and only want the best camera in the world, look no further than the Pixel 3. But if you're not that customer, you can look away and there are so many options to choose from, from the Android ecosystem today. Well, let us know what you thought of the Google Pixel 3 Pixel 3 XL review in this video. You can also go to tech2.com and check out Sheldon Pinto's super detailed, super thorough, tons of photos, tons of video comparison, detailed review on tech2.com. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got all the cool reviews of latest hardware and a lot of meaningful chats as a part of our Tech2 Talks series. Don't forget to hit up that subscribe and that bell icon so you get notified every single time there's a brand new video. This is Gadgetwala signing out. This has been fun. And don't forget to tag us with your Pixel 3 or any other cool smartphone photos on Instagram or on Twitter. Our handles are right here. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.